Now we get to the really fun stuff where we actually talk a little bit about receiving customer payments. It's always great when we have money coming in the door and I want to show you how to actually go ahead and do this the right way in QuickBooks so that you zero out your invoice and then we'll talk after receiving customer payments about how you put the money in the bank. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and we'll talk about receiving customer payments. When you receive a payment from a customer, you're going to want to go ahead and enter it here where it says Receive Payments. The first thing it asks you in this window is, who did you receive the money from? And I'm going to pick Tom Allen's Sunroom. And you'll notice that once I do that, a couple things happen. First of all, it pre-populates all of the invoices that are still open for Tom down here at the bottom of the window. Also, it tells me the total that the customer owes right up here. What I'm going to do is plug in the amount of money that the customer paid. Let's say that Tom paid $9.24.93. As soon as I do that, you'll notice that down at the bottom, it checks off the very first one. It assumes all of the money was to pay the first one. If there was any remaining money, it would be applied to the second one and so on and so forth. And you want to be really careful there because what if the customer had said they wanted to apply that money to the second one? Or maybe they said they want to pay half on one and half on the other. You can actually check off the ones the customer is paying and then way over to the right here, you can type in the amount of money they're paying towards that invoice. If you don't pay particular attention to that, what will happen is further down the line, you and the customer will be having a meeting because you won't have the same set of books on both sides. So pay a lot of attention to that. The next thing you'll notice is you have to put in the date of the payment. Let's say that it was on the 23rd of December. And then the next thing is, how did the customer pay you? You'll notice currently it says reference number. If I chose cash, it'll say reference number. If I choose check, it'll say check number. If I choose credit or debit, you're going to see this pop up. You do not need to enter this information unless you've signed up with the Intuit Merchant Services because what happens is if you type the card number in, then it will run their card. But if you're not signed up with the Intuit Merchant Services, then this does you no good. Just X out of that and it'll still stay on the debit or credit option so that you will know how the customer paid. You can choose the e-check option. Over here, you've got different payment methods. You'll see there's MasterCard, Barter, and PayPal. Make sure that you actually choose Barter if someone does barter this and that way you can actually zero the invoice. The other thing is, what if you need to add a new payment method? You would just click Add New Payment Method, type in the name of that payment method, let's say it's Square in this case, and then we'll go ahead and choose a payment type, in this case we'll say Other and click OK, and now what you'll notice is that Square is on the list forever so that I can choose it for future payments. A couple of other things just to be aware of. Up at the top you have a couple of tabs again and under the main tab you'll know what a lot of these are already. Here's your find option right here. We can search through all the customer payments for specific ones we might be looking for. Here's a way to create a new customer payment. Remember it's going to save this one and create a new blank one for you. Here's a way to delete that payment. And then you can print. You do have the ability to print the payment and just to show you what it's going to look like, I'll preview this and it's just basically what they call a payment receipt and it looks like this. Alright, I'm going to hit close at the top, get out of that. You can also email that same payment if you wanted to. You can also attach a file, we've talked about that. And then you can also look up a customer and an invoice if you wanted to. Now the open ones are here, but what if the one the customer said that they're wanting to pay is not on this list? It might be that they've already paid it or you applied it incorrectly and you can go and search for a customer or invoice this way and just see what's going on. You can also unapply a payment that basically just unchecks whatever was checked down here and I'll go ahead and check it back again. You might also apply a discount or credit. A lot of times a customer might have terms of something like 2% 10 net 30. 
you would give a customer those terms if you want to get the customer to pay you a little bit earlier than they normally would. In that case, you probably gave them a small discount for doing that, and here's where you could go and apply that discount or that credit. You may have a situation where a customer has a returned check, their check bounced, and you need to record that. All you have to do is record it right here, and it'll set everything up the right way for you. Obviously, here is where Intuit can sell you the credit card processing if you wanted to go check out all the features of those options. Under the Reports tab, there's several different reports you can run, and you can see those here. And then also under the Payments tab, that's where they have that credit card processing again if you want to check that out. I do have a question for you, though. Where is this payment going to go once I hit Save and Close at the bottom? Well, let me show you where it's going to go. I'm going to go back to the chart of accounts for just a moment because I want to show you this account right here called Undeposited Funds. If you look all the way to the right, there's a balance of $3,364.93 in that account. This is all of the payments you've received that you have not yet put in the bank. A good way to keep a check on yourself is if you know that everything's been deposited, but yet this has money in it, then you need to figure out what happened. I'm going to go back to the Receive Payment window. So the question is, where does the payment go? And the money's going to go into undeposited funds. Now, I want to just show you something. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save and Close at the bottom. And I'm going to save my transaction. I want to flip back over to a couple of these reports. I'm going to go to Open Invoices. You'll see now there's only two that are there. And if I flip back to the Customer Balance Detail Report, you'll see there are the three invoices and the payment that we just received. Now, let's talk about something that we actually saw when we were in the Preferences. I'm going to go back up to Edit Preferences for a moment. And when we looked at the Payments option on the left, Company Preferences, I had mentioned this option right here, use undeposited funds as default deposit to account. If I uncheck that and click OK, I want to show you what happens when you're on the Receive Payment window. I'm going to go back to Home, and I'm going to go back and pull up my Customer Center. That's the easiest way to get back to that payment. This is Tom Allen's Sunroom and I'm going to double click on that payment we received. This is a little bit different now. Now I get a choice of where I'd like to deposit the money. Notice undeposited funds is still on the list, but so are my bank accounts. If I knew this was the only payment that was going to be in this deposit, I could skip the next step we're going to talk about and just put it directly in the checking account and I'm done. But that's not going to work if you have more than one payment in a single deposit. You want to make sure that your bank statement matches QuickBooks. If you have more than one payment that's in a single deposit, you still want to put each one in undeposited funds. And then when we go to the next step where we talk about making our deposits, that's where you're going to see those two be pulled into a single deposit. That's going to be the difference right there. If this confuses you, don't even worry about it. Just put everything in undeposited funds. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save and Close. And if I've made a change, I'll save it. And I want to show you one more quick thing. If I open up the invoice that we just paid, you're going to notice that it actually says that it was paid and it gives you the date that it was paid right here. Even if there's one penny left, it will not say paid on this particular invoice, but this one is paid in full. I'm going to hit Save and Close at the bottom, and that's how you actually receive payments. I want to go ahead now and flip over to the next section and show you how to make deposits. Now that we've actually gone through and received some payments from our customers, we can go ahead and make a deposit. I want to go through this section, which is Section 6, and talk to you about how to take that money that you've received for customer payments and actually put it into a deposit and actually have that show up in your checkbook register. Let's flip over to QuickBooks, and I will show you how to make a deposit. 
When you're ready to actually make a deposit, what you'll want to do is actually follow your flowchart all the way to the record deposits option right here. You'll notice the little three that you see indicates there are three sets of monies that are sitting in undeposited funds right now waiting to be pulled into a deposit. Now before I click on that, I just want to talk for a moment about something that I see often that will cause you problems. A lot of times people will get to the step where they receive the payments over here and when they go to make a deposit, they'll actually go to the checkbook register and type it in. Here's the problem with that. Number one, if you do that, the money sits in undeposited funds at this point and it just grows and grows and grows. And you want that to be zero every single time you've actually deposited all of the money you've received. That's the first thing. The next thing is, if you go to the check register and you try to type this in, what's going to happen is you're going to type, and the first thing it will ask you for here is a payee. If you had several different customers that had paid you, you obviously couldn't put all three on that one line. That's not such a big deal. What would happen next is you would go over here where it says deposit and put in the total. But here's where the real problem is going to come in right here, where you have to pick something from the chart of accounts. Most of the time what I see people do is they will pick one of their income accounts right here. And you don't want to do that because now you're doubling that income. QuickBooks decided this was income at the time that you created the actual invoice itself. Here you will be doubling it if you tell it it's income again. The other thing I see people do is they will also sometimes pick the accounts receivable account which is right here and that's wrong because you've already been there done that. It was accounts receivable when you created the invoice. There is no correct way to enter it in this window. You need to actually follow the flow chart all the way on the home screen and choose the record deposits option right here. This is a listing right here of all of the monies that you've collected that you haven't yet deposited. A couple of ways you can view this window, you'll notice right now I'm looking at all the types of monies I've received. I could look at just the debit card transactions or maybe just the cash and checks, but typically I leave that on all types. You can also sort this list by payment method, by name, amount, whichever one of these you want to sort it by. Again, I usually just leave that on payment method. There's really no reason for me to have to change that. When you go down this list, you'll want to check off the ones that are going in this particular deposit. If you're going to have two of these and have a single deposit in the bank for $24.40 like you see here, then after you check those two off, you click OK and later you come back in and check this one off. Just make sure that your deposit total matches what actually was deposited into the bank. That way it's easier to go ahead and reconcile. You'll have a hard time if you put these in one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and check all three in this case and click OK. And you'll see that it populated all three of these into my deposit here. A couple of quick things. First of all, make sure you're depositing to the correct bank account. Often when someone says to me, I know I made that deposit, they've put it in the wrong account. The other thing is make sure you have the correct date for your deposit. And then it will put the word deposit here automatically in the memo. You can change that if you need to say something particular. When you're looking down here at the three items that it brought in, do not change this account right here because this is where the money actually came from. When we received the payment, it went into undeposited funds. Now we're pulling it out of undeposited funds so that we can actually save this in a moment and it will be in our checkbook. You do have the ability to put a memo in here for each of these lines if you'd like to do that. You'll see there's a place for the check number if you forgot to put one in on the receive payment window or now maybe you want to put something else in that field, you can. You have your class field here and then of course the amount over here. You can also add something to this. If you happen, for example, to have a little bit of cash you want to throw in there, then go ahead and put in whichever one of these customers you would want to use, or if it's just cash that you yourself put in here, you really don't have to put anything in that particular field. You do have to fill in the from account field though, that's mandatory. 
Think about if you as the business owner put money into the business, then it's considered an owner contribution, and that's the one you'd want to pick here. What if it's something like a rebate? Then you would go ahead and put it to the account that you used when you actually purchased the item to begin with. For example, if you purchased a new printer, and let's say from the drop-down list you have picked an expense account, maybe office expenses, then use that same account here so that it zeroes it out. You can put as many items as you want here. A couple things down at the bottom. You'll notice it says cash back goes to. As a business, you cannot get cash back when you go to the bank to make a deposit, but as a sole proprietor with a personal account, you could. You would just pick the particular account that you want the cash back to go to. You would have the memo if you had one and the amount that you wanted to keep, and then it would deduct it from this total over here. Now, a couple of quick things at the top I just want to point out. I want to point out that you have the ability to use your next or previous buttons to look through your deposits if you happen to be looking for a particular one. You could save this. You could also print this, and I want to show you the two versions that you would be able to print. Here's a deposit slip. I'll just go ahead and preview that for you. And you can see it looks just like this. However, I think the one you're going to want to use is going to be the deposit summary. And this is what the deposit summary looks like right here. You can actually just attach that and send it to the bank if you want, or keep it for your records. The other thing I want to mention is if when you were in that first window where you checked off the payments you wanted to pull in, and let's say you checked off the wrong ones, go ahead and hit this payments option right here. And if you had some in there, you could go and check off some that you didn't automatically pull in. I pulled all three in and that's why I have this window here. So I'll go ahead and cancel that. You can also look at a history for this deposit. This will actually show you all of the payments right here that are going to be in this deposit. And if you wanted to actually go to one of these, you could actually just go directly to it. And then you could edit this payment or if you want to just look at it and close it, you could do that as well. And the last thing is you have the ability to attach a file to this. This could be any file at all that you feel pertains to this deposit. Notice the total because we're going to see this in the register in a moment. The total is $3,364.93. I'm going to go ahead and save and close. And that actually completes that whole line all the way across. Now let's go look in the register and see if we see that deposit. And you'll see there it is right there at the bottom. Now the reason you see the blue line is because anything below it is post dated. Remember for the practice file, it thinks today is December the 15th. Notice a couple of other things. It says split. That's because there were three different transactions on that deposit. And then also notice the fact that there is no payee. Again, that's because there were three different payees and it couldn't put them all in that one line right there. And that's really all you need to know. That's how your deposits are going to work. Just remember, like I said, don't type them in here. You want to actually follow the flow chart all the way to the very end so that everything goes to the correct accounts. That's how you're going to make deposits in QuickBooks. Let's go ahead now and go over into Section 7 and talk a little bit about how to create credit memos. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to get a free QuickBooks Pro 2020 introductory course, Click over there and click over there to watch all the videos in this QuickBooks Pro 2020 playlist.